Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel, The Invoking, where you get to learn everything about analytics and automation. In this video, I'll be walking you through how to create your first Microsoft Forms. And I'm going to do it differently because you will learn how to apply a lot of customization. So, one of the first things I would like to show you is this. So I want to use an header image in my form. So I would advise you also try it along. And how can you do that? By creating uh, a PowerPoint template. Just go to design and size and customize side slash size. Just put 33 by 10, 33 by 10 centimeter. Then you get what I have here. You can put any small design together. And I'm going to export this as image. I'll click on file, then save as, and come to PNG. I want to put this on the desktop, on my desktop. So, design templates. I'm going to click on save. Just this one. So, it gets this image exported as, it gets this design exported as image on my desktop, which is what I have here now. So, I have my header image ready. And the next thing to do is go to your Office 365. Log into Office 365, or you can go straight to Microsoft Forms URL if you have it. But I advise that when you log into Office 365, you can easily navigate to any other Office 365 tools. And I'm going to scroll on this app side and then look for Forms, which I will open up a new tab. All right, so we have, uh, if this is the first time of creating forms, you won't have all this, you know, I've created a couple of forms. And Microsoft Forms have two options. Is either you want to create a form or you want to create a quiz. You can also use it for quiz. In another video, I will show you how to create a quiz and manage quiz using Microsoft Forms. That is why I will encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you won't miss out when those videos drop. So right now, I'm just going to click on new form. This is an appraiser, and I'm just going to call it appraiser form, right? So the goal is Daddy Hub creates a monthly appraiser. Um, the next is, uh, I just want to collect information about what are your goals. Say target. Okay, let's start with I'm going to delay this and start with months simply because it's going to be on a monthly basis and I don't want to recreate this form. So let us have an option where you get to select the month you are doing your appraisal for. And I'm going to click on choice and I'll say please select the month. I'm going to start with January. The next option. It's February. If you have it somewhere, you can easily copy. You know, and you can see it's giving you the intelligence in Maxwell is the Maxwell form. It's already suggesting it seems to have it seems to attack the month. Is this the next one? March. And I can see um April is not here, but I have to click another option. April myself. And next we have May. No, I have to put May. We have June. Yes, I have June. July, August, September, October, November, and I have this. So what you're basically doing there was just to train that to identify that I want it in that order. Then it picks it up. So, and um, what I have, I want to make it required. Beside that, you can see, it's just going to have drop like this. Okay, let's move on to the next. The next question is, target for the month. Let's assume it's a financial target. What is the target for the month? And after that, I have something to say, um, what, how long were you able to achieve? So it's also required, all right? So, and lastly, I just want to ask, job difficulties so and i want to make this a long question time meaning that you know you might want to express yourself 
this that I have is a short answer. So just take about 250, 255 character. But when you make it long answer, you then you know have a lot of characters to take in. So my form is ready, but I've not I have to start customization. If I click on preview here, I'll be able to see how the form looks like. Alright. So please select the amount. This is month of January. And you know, put target. Remember, they are all you know compulsory, so you must fill something before you submit. I'm gonna click on that. I want to create an experience. So when you are building form, you try to create an experience, especially when you have multiple questions on the form. Don't let everything be on the first page. And I'm going to do that by adding sessions. First, I'm going to add a session here. Session. So when I add these sessions and preview, you might not see a significant change. You are just seeing sessions. And I'm going to add a session the second time. I'm still clicking on this session. And when I had me, instead of adding questions and I had another session, this will now break it to a new page. And what does that mean? When I click on preview, you see you have the first page, click next, then you have your questions. And what you have to fill in the form. And I'm going to just customize them and turn it to click next to proceed. I'm just going to look like that because when I do this, you say click next to proceed and click next. More so, I want to make this a drop down rather than having it as you know, missing all the month. How do I do that? I come back to this question and to this three dot option here. When I click, I will see drop down. By clicking drop down, it changes to a drop down question. Question. All right. That is not all. Remember that this session I have a session image that I've already designed, and I want to import it. When I click on this insert media and insert video image for image, you can search directly on web using Bing. You can use OneDrive in case it's on your OneDrive folder. But I want to upload because it's on my desktop. So just going to desktop. So it's going to load and um, depending on the image dimension. So oftentimes that is why I advise to use a PowerPoint presentation that I showed you how I went to slide size. And change it 30 by 10 centimeter. That way, you know, it looks pretty cool and um, everything perfectly well. Um, I can just call this a laser session. And immediately, I upload an image header. It takes a design before this number were not in this form. Everything just takes a design and becomes really interesting. In case you also have a brief information to share with them before they start filling the form, you can enter your description here. The next thing I'm going to do is the team. But before that, let us preview. Here's a preview. You see that? Next, you see, you see that? It's looking, you know, presentable. You are building an experience, user experience, even into your form. And the next is the team. You know, you can choose from these teams. If I click on this guy, it's going to change the background and the look and feel improves. And you can also customize it, which is what I want to do. I want to add my own image and color. Here it is. Uh, here I am. I need to select my image, upload image. Same thing. I have to upload from my desktop. I have an image on my desktop, which is this. Same image I use for the design. So, uploading the, the image at the moment. Okay, image must be less than five megabytes in size, so I can't use this. Let me just find um, one image I can upload. I think this should. This is working. You know, just the background, so that I can see that you can have your own customized image at the bottom. I also want to change the color, but I want the color to be the same color that I have as my header. Um, I don't know the code here. How do I get the code? I can still come to my you know, PowerPoint and uh, another easier way for you to get the code is I'm just going to put something like this and I want to shade the text. I want to fill it. Eyedropper, when I put my eyedropper here, it's going to tell me the RGB is 31, 78, 121. That's the RGB. 
in case uh, this is asking for x code is another dimension of color code um, of course i can just open here say rgb to x converter x converter rgb to x converter and just use the converter to get the code don't forget we were trying to do something before so when i put it again 31 78 1 to 1 so i can easily come back here 31 78 1 to 1 and i say come back to x so i have it this is my x code i can copy but you know if you know color code now i've pasted it you can see the ranges here all right so that's fine and i come back here then my form is set you can see this is a customized team it is not the ones that we have there so when I click on preview, you know, imagine the background, transparent background, nest. You see, I can then fill in January. My target for the month maybe is, is a financial target. I have one million naira. I just want to put the comment. So one million naira. How much am I able to make? I mean, one well, I'm able to raise one point three. So what were my difficulties? None. I can put So that we have been able to submit before. But you can see, submit another response. So that allows me to submit another response. And depending on how you are building your form or what you are using it for, you might not want them to have access to submit another response. If that is the case, you can come here to settings and say one response per person that way the person would not be able to fill the form one more than once also as you can see under the responses tab you know it has collected my response you can see the amount there and the values that are filled and i can download the data in excel by clicking on this open in excel it gets the data downloaded on my pc and i can then work with it there's also something i want you to see that when you are sharing your form within the organization you can see only people in my organization can respond when you are sharing this form it automatically collects the email and the name of the person for you that is why i'm not bothering to ask about the name because it will definitely collect it if i click on preview you see it's mentioning my name hi Olari Waji. When you submit this form, the owner will be able to see your name and email address. So you might not need to disturb yourself. But if you are sharing with people outside the organization, maybe you are using it to collect data about your customer, which are external customers, you don't have to click here. Anyone can respond. When you choose anyone can respond, then when you copy this link, then that is when people outside the organization can fill the form. Otherwise, they won't be able to fill the form. The third option here is you can specify specific emails of people, you know, that can fill the form. As many people as you put there, others will not be able to access the form. So we're going to take it back to only people in organization. And when you put anyone can respond, it will not collect the name and email for you. You have to create it as a feed on this form. Another thing you also need to note is that even when you are sharing the form within your organization, there are some times that you want to make the form anonymous. Maybe because of the you know, reason you are taking feedback from them, you are not interested in their names, or rather their honest feedback. So in that case, you have to come to settings and remove record name. So when you remove record name, then it will capture the name for you. All right. You can also look at the options for other responses. You can set the date the form will be open and when it will be closed. You might want to show full questions as well, especially for quiz. It's not active here. You want to show progress graphs so that they can see that we are getting close to the end of the form. And maybe you want to customize your thank you message. Your response was submitted. Successfully something like that 
allow receipt after submission you might want to send a copy to the person that filled the form so that i can get a copy of the form he or she filled that's what this option is meant for you might also want to get email notification every time someone fills the form so when you activate this whenever an employee or member of your team fills this form you get the alert in the email that someone has filled the form okay there's so much you can do when it comes to customizing your office your Microsoft forms and I believe this tutorial is a quick guide. There are other things that we are not able to do now. Take for example, branching, where you might want to lead to another form of another set of questions, depending on what, on the option the person selects. In another video, I'm going to show you that. And that's why I'm going to encourage you to also subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video, so that you won't miss out when I upload my new uh, videos. In case you have any other questions or a use case that you want to apply this to that is not covered there, please feel free to pass it as comment and I'm going to check them and I'll respond to them. Thank you.